Hi folks, the Filipina P here, coming to you from a hotel room in Leyte. Earlier this year, I said I was gonna build my parents their first real house, and I'm happy to say that for the past eight weeks, the construction has been underway, and it's now almost halfway complete. I'm building a four bedroom, two bathroom, 150 square meter home for my five family members. For those of you that don't use the metric system, that's about 1,600 square feet of living space, and this is quite big for a Filipino home. Originally, I was planning to build it for quite a bit less, but the budget's really grown because of the prices of the materials. It's skyrocketed over the summer, and I'm using the best quality materials because our island is prone to typhoons. Even still, I'm on track to complete the project for just under a million pesos, or 19,000 US. That sounds incredible, almost impossible, but I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it step by step, from the permitting phase to where we are now. It's gonna be the greatest thing that's ever happened to my family, and it's bringing us even closer together because we're building it ourselves. That's right, no contractor, no middleman, just us. I think you're gonna enjoy this. This is what it should look like when the house is finished. And yes, all the doors are gonna be blue. And when you enter, there's a sitting area close to the entrance. And on this level, there are two bedrooms. One is for my parents and the other one, my brothers have to decide later. And the next area would be the dining area. And at the end is gonna be the kitchen and the door to go outside. And the bathroom in this 3D model looks small, but in reality, it's a little bigger. And we're going upstairs. And sorry folks, I'm not used to navigating this 3D program and I'm driving like a drunken pirate. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm Pirate P. Are you sick yet? Okay, so this is the second floor. There's plenty of open space and there are two more bedrooms up here. And this is going to the terrace. Oh, there's my folks. Hi folks. Hi mom and dad. Are you talking about what a wonderful daughter you have? No? Well, you should be. That's the plan, folks. Now let's see how it turns out. But before you can start building anything, you have to get the permits. And the process of just getting the paperwork done here can take months. In my case, it took two months and this is what I had to get, this thick stack of paper. Oh God. One, two, three. All right, by the way, folks, um, prices may vary from island to island. Um, it might be a higher from a bigger city like Cebu or Manila, but this is what I paid here in Leyte. First, um, you have to submit certain requirements to get the building permit. First, you have to get your barangay clearance. I think this is uh, some sort of proof of your address, where you live, where you're going to build your house. And I paid 230 pesos for that. Next is Barangay Drainage Certificate, which I don't know what that is for, but that's part of the requirements. You have to pay for that. That's also 230 pesos. Okay, next, you have to get a locational clearance from the city planning office that's located in your city. I paid 1,810 pesos. Next, you have to get the latest tax declaration of your property in the city assessor's office. That's 90 pesos. And the same thing with the latest tax clearance. That's 80 pesos. You also have to submit a copy of um, property title and also your deed of sale. I have to get a copy of that, so I paid 2,940 pesos. Next, you have to get a sketch plan of lot, um, duly certified by the geodetic engineer. So what I paid for that for the surveying of the property, it's 8,000 pesos. Next, you have to get 
an approved subdivision plan from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources Office, or the DENR. I paid 100 pesos for that. Now, you have to look for an engineer or an architect, but somehow you can ask your city, uh, um, city planning office. They might know someone. So I have the architectural plans, six sets. The structural plans, six sets as well. Plumbing and electrical plans, bill of material, scope of works, and its estimate. Plumbing sanitary permit with five copies, material specifications signed by the architect. So I paid a package for that um, for 16,000 pesos. Next, you have to get a notarized application form for the building permit. You have to get seven copies and that was free. That's the only thing for free here in my list. All right, next you have to get the electrical permit, five copies uh, from the Bureau of Fire and Protection Office. I paid 1,845 pesos and I have to pay a processing fee of 550 pesos. Now, once you get your building permit, you have to pay uh, for a tarpaulin printing, that's 400 pesos because you have to print it and uh, display your building permit on site where you're building the house. Also, I paid 2,000 pesos for miscellaneous fees, transportation, mm, photocopies, and whatnot. That's about 2,000 pesos. So in total, the building permit was 34,275 pesos. Now, once I got all the paperwork done, it was time to build us a house. The first thing we had to do is demolish the old house. And to tell you honestly, folks, when I saw my dad tearing down the house that day, it was really sad. And he's not really having trouble tearing down the wall, if you can call it a wall, because the materials that were used in our old house were a bunch of odds and ends anyway, and they're very easy to tear down, just like that corrugated tin. Next, we had to dig deep holes for the foundation beams and set them in concrete. Once the beams were up, we started building the walls on the first floor. I rented a cement mixer to make the job easier for the guys. The funny thing is, when I asked how much the rental would cost, the guy gave the famous Filipino answer, it's up to you. Okay then, I guess it's free. Then. We had to place the beams to support the second floor. We poured concrete over the metal mesh as added support. That's my Uncle Joey working really hard today since he knows I'm standing right behind him with a camera. Once the wall started going up on the second floor, the house really started taking shape. So let's go out to the building site and take a closer look. Eight months ago, I gave you a tour of our old house and introduced you guys to my folks. And our house was made out of weaved bamboo and corrugated tin. The roof was leaking and the floor was rotten. It's not really fit for living, but this is what it looks like today. The property is sitting on 200 square meters of land and we're going to build a six foot solid concrete wall around the entire property. And here, I'm going to put steel gates as the entrance, a mailbox and a doorbell. And I think that's the, this is the only house that has a mailbox and a doorbell and I think it's pretty cool. And this portion right here is the only portion that is left from my childhood home. They're using it as a um, storage area for the building materials. They're gonna be, uh, they're gonna demolish that area there. And by the way guys, we're using four kinds of um, sizes of the rebar. 9 millimeter, 10, 12, and 16. It's very sturdy. And if you can see that hanging rebar, we're gonna build a second floor terrace it's running the entire length of the house and that door is the entrance to the terrace it's extra space for entertaining guests or uh, 
afternoon tea or coffee. And over here, folks, is going to be the courtyard area. I know it's still messy, but I promise once it's done, this is going to be immaculately clean. We're going to put some ornamental plants, maybe a sitting area here, and um, yeah, bamboo chairs and stuff. And yeah, let's go inside um, the first level of the house. Let's go. Oops. This is the first floor of the house. It's 77 square meters. It's about 800 square feet. There are two bedrooms here. This is the first bedroom. Um, my parents' bedroom with two windows. And this is the second bedroom. It's either one of my brothers. <laughs> and a staircase, staircase over there going to the second floor. And right over there in the corner is going to be the bathroom and the shower room. Right at the end is the kitchen. This is the dining area. And that one there is going to be the living room. All right, folks, let's go upstairs. Currently, there's a lot of wooden framing and it's going to be difficult to maneuver around, but I'll try my best. All right, so this is the second floor. It's very messy at the moment. Oh my God, there's Charles Bronson. Oh, wait a minute. That's my dad. <laughs> All right, dad, say hi to the folks. This is the Charles Bronson of the Philippines, my dad. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you excited with your fortress? Excited ka na pa? Excited na. Excited? He's very excited. And I think my dad can use one of the rooms here as his fortress if he wants to get away from mom if they have a huge fight. So, kung magawin ka mo ni mama, adi ka lang adi higbaw. He said that was his plan all along. He's gonna stay up here. Okay. All right, dad. Thank you. I'm gonna give them a tour. All right. So guys, this is really, really, really difficult. So, there are... Okay, so... There are two bedrooms up here. And uh, this is going to be my pee pad or the pee pod. And this is going to be my quarters whenever I visit my family. But obviously, I don't live here. I think I'll... Let my dad use this one as his man cave. And <laughs> because of, I'm not going to be living here, I'm out of the nest. So there's a big window over there. It's the road view. And there's a pool of water at the moment because it's, been, it's raining. And let me show you the other bedroom. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Everyone's busy. Everyone's busy. Okay, okay. All right. This is the second bedroom facing the staircase. And it's got two windows with um, the mountain view a bit, the mountain view. And another window here. And I think this is going to be my, um, my brother's bedroom, Chan. But currently, he's in Cebu is working. And over here... Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Over here is the big... One of the big windows. This is going to be the mountain view. I can see the mountains up there. And another one. And if you notice, guys, we don't have provisions for the AC because unlike in the West, you guys have central AC. But here you have to either buy a window type or a split type AC and you have to put it in each room. But since the electricity is quite expensive here in the Philippines, I don't think my parents will, you know, will have an AC in the house so I'll let them decide later if they want an AC in their house 
All right, so let me show you uh, the electrical because it's already been roughed in. I think there's one here. Okay. This one. This is the electric this is the electrical because the electrician came last week. All right. Let me just go back here. All right. So folks, currently they're working on the beams if you can see it up there because next week they're going to fix the uh, roof trusses and the roof will be colored blue and once the house is finished it's um santorini inspired white with blue trims like the greek blue trim that would be awesome all right so that's where we stand after eight weeks and um, the next time you see me here it's going to be the finished product and if you folks have questions about the building process and the cost of supplies please um, leave them in the comment section below and again i want to thank you all without whose help none of this would have been possible so thank you so much and i'll see you next time bye If you think about it, I'm kind of like your stewardess, making sure you stay in an upright position during the video and guiding you to the exits. The exits of all your worries about life in the Philippines. The captain has asked that you please give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to this channel. And for your entertainment, we have a selection of other in-flight movies for you to enjoy. In the case of an emergency landing, place your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. Have a nice flight!